You can show Raptor. Raptor. Oh it yeah. Is two. <laughs> it is two. Are you showing Raptor himself? Yeah. He's like it. He likes it. Does he like your book? Yeah, he's like my book. Let's show your camera what you have on your book. It's in my and and then right Esther. It's Esther. Yeah, just like Raptor. Just like Raptor. He's have he's have a strap. Yeah, it's yeah. just like Raptor, huh? Yeah. Olive is so proud of her little book, her little reptile book, because it has an Argus monitor in there. Huh? It's just like Raptor, huh? Yeah. Yeah, do you like do you think he likes to see himself in the book? Yeah, he's like it. He likes it? Yeah. Oh he wants to taste it. He says, mm, let me taste that book. <laughs> Should we let him out? I think Raptor yeah. wants to come out. Raptor can come out. Yeah, he wants to come out. He says, I want to see that book. I want to see if it tastes like an artist monitor. He can't eat it, your book? That's okay, we won't let him eat it. Where are you going there, Freddy? Hmm? You can go for a walkabout? Hmm? You want to go for a walkabout? Do you want to show him your book? Yeah. Show him your book. It's two. Is he going back? Where are you going? He's gonna it's gonna go going back. back. Good job, little man. He's a daddy. Raptor likes his book. Raptor likes his book? Yeah. Yeah. Just wait. It's the yeah. Raptor Mira. Ooh, he's gonna eat this. <laughs> he says, I want to see that book up close. Let me see that book. Oh, look, it's me. It looks just like me. <laughs> he thinks she... it's pretty cool. So one thing I haven't talked much about this new enclosure is the substrate. Uh, this soil that is at the bottom of the enclosure is the same stuff as we had in his previous enclosure. We're prepared to make this about a foot deeper as he grows, but it's plenty deep enough now. So we've got in it, oh, roughly a foot of soil. Hey, okay, so he's got his little hole here, and his, his burrow system is actually quite complex. See, he can enter there, and then you see over there, there's some exits. And I believe there's a third exit over there in the corner along the wall. You can't really see it. But he's got several entrances and exits to this burrow system. And who knows how deep and complex it is. So one of the cool things I love about his new enclosure is I can do that exercise I was showing you where I pick him up and give him a treat really easy. I'll just take a mealworm and put it up at a top shelf. And mealworms are easy for this. Mealworms and superworms because they don't move very fast. Waxworms work great too. Waxworms, mealworms, superworms, you put them down and they just kind of stay there. Um, obviously you could do it with an animal too because it's dead but the good thing about waxworms, mealworms and superworms is they're such small food item unlike an animal that you can do lots of repetitions of picking him up and giving him the food Oop, it's gonna... I said they don't crawl anywhere and that one crawled right off but see I can do a bunch of repetitions put the mealworm down there or waxworm or superworm Go pick him up Let him eat the worm, then put him back. That's so nice. That is so nice. Mm -hmm. I like and then get another little mealworm. And like I said, the nice thing with these guys is they're so small, we could do a whole bunch without um, him getting full. Let me pick you up, bud. And then uh, he starts looking forward to being picked up instead of avoiding me picking him up and not liking it. He likes it when I pick him up because he knows he's going to get a food reward. But at the same time, he's not getting direct association of food with my fingers. He knows my hand brings him to the food, but my hand does not 
have the food on it. Because the last thing I want him to do is to start directly associating my hand with food and then biting my fingers whenever they come near him. That's what he does with the, um, the tongs. I don't have to have any food on the tongs and he hits it and attacks it. So I don't want direct association with my fingers, but I do want him to see my hands as a good positive thing. So by taking a little mealworm, putting it on a shelf where he can't see it. So he didn't see me put that there. He's not, he doesn't have any direct association with my hand and the food, but he has a nice positive indirect association because he knows when I reach in to pick him up, that this is, this is a positive thing because he knows I'm going to take him directly to food. So rather than, re, than avoiding me, my touch and disliking my touch, he starts to look forward to my touch. He says, hey, that's pretty cool. Whenever this guy touches me, nice things happen, positive things happen. And he wants me to pick him up instead of avoiding it. Because he knows if I pick him up, he gets something to eat. Raptor. Good job. Look, he ate it, the cockroach. Hold on, hold on, he's going to eat his cockroach first. Oh. Where are you going with it? Where are you going with it? Oh, you want to eat it up there? Don't drop it. Ooh, yummy. Good job. Is that pretty yummy? He's green. He's small on it. Oh yeah, he swallowed it. He says, it's yummy. Daddy, can I see? Yeah, you can see. Can, can't. Can't. You can see. Where are you going there, man? Huh? Are you looking for more or something? And he can come crawl out on me. He wants to go run around right now. Here, bud. We'll take you over here. He lets you run around. He wants to go run around in his room. So let's go take him out and let him play. Let him have a little play time. And we haven't been heating this room like we did before, uh, just because I, I don't let him out here for more than a few minutes at a time. But we let him out, let him run around and explore until he starts to cool. So maybe 15, 20 minutes. No matter how big his enclosure is, he enjoys you know seeing new things, doing new things. So I let him out for a bit. And then um, call him back and put him away when he's done with his run. As you see, he's, he thoroughly enjoys it and he utilizes all the space. Uh, I don't think you could give this guy too big of an enclosure. Uh, no matter how big the area he has to run, he, he takes advantage of it. And um, so we're going to, looking forward to the warmer summer months where he could actually do this outside. Our yard is completely mink proof. And... Um, because he's so small, we're not going to let him explore unsupervised. We don't want to risk him squeezing into some weird crack or getting eaten by a bird because he's not very big, even just a bird could eat him. But we'll let him run supervised around the yard as well as take him on some walks when the weather heats up enough to do so. Um, for now, he'll just have to settle with uh, a few minutes here and there in random rooms in the house. Okay, let's put Raptor back. He's had a nice little... Run around? What? Mommy. Hey, you? What do you want? He's not in there. We gotta go find him. Where is he? Where's Raptor? She's looking around. Let's go find him. He's in another room. Let's go take this and give him some nummies. Come on, let's go get Raptor. Papa? Raptor, come over here. So he's been running around for a couple minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and call him back and put him back in his enclosure so he can warm back up again. Um, at this small size, he loses temperatures, his body temperature pretty quick. So we just got a little animal here. That's what we're gonna use for the reward. Need a little help? Yeah. 
he likes to use the ground to like reposition his food. So I put my hand up there so he can kind of, if he wants to, rub it on my hand to reposition it. He hates the long tails. <laughs> Sometimes they're hard to swallow. There you go. There you go, good job. We caught a Doraptor. <laughs> yeah. Can I eat Doraptor? Uh, yep, he's eating. He's having his yummies. He's so yummy. Yummy Dubia. Dubia? Yeah, he's eating a Dubia. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, that's yummy. Can we eat? Yep, he's having to eat. Oh, yummy. Look, oh, yummy. Oh, oh, that. That was yummy, huh? Should we go put him back? Come on, let's go put him back. Let him get all warm now. He's kind of cooled off. Back up, warm up on your basking spot. Here you go. There he goes, back in his nice warm home. Um. Home, yeah, he's in his nice warm home. Okay, let's shut the door. There he goes, now he's back home. He can warm up under his basking light and uh, we'll come back and do it again tomorrow. <laughs> That's our daily routine. We just uh, call him out of the cage, give him a piece of food, let him run around the room, call him back, put him back in the cage. And then sometimes we'll do that twice in a day. Um, but that's his, his regular routine. So it gets him accustomed to coming back to me so that when uh, we start going outside and moving to his, his play place being outside, then that will continue his training step by step until he's ready to actually start hunting. And he's so accustomed to coming regardless of the location and the situation that it's just normal for him that when we're out in the real world hunting that he'll want to just come back just like he's he's always been doing his whole life. Every day he comes back to me and gets some food. So we'll just keep continuing this training. Uh, we have another step that we want to take in the training and we will show that in the next video. And that'll be a very important step for us to take before we actually start hunting with him. So I'll be showing you that next step and that next uh, part of his training next time. Thanks for watching.